I'm going to start recording. There we go. Uh, so just as a quick reminder for you guys, um, of course, what you can do is you can go to the internet and you can type in uh, blender.org, right? Dot org. There we go. And of course, remember, it's on the board as well. And this just takes you to the Blender site, right? Um, and what you could do is you just go to the download section. And once you're in the download section, there's two download options you have, right? There is regular download Blender, and that's if you have your own computer and you, you have administrator privileges you can install, right? That's for if you can install. If you cannot, right, like say for our, our devices, we do not have administrator privileges, you're going to have to go to the other versions area, click on that, and download Windows uh, Portable, right? The actual Windows section portable zip, right? That'll basically download this as a zip file uh, that you just extract the folder from, right? You just kind of grab that Blender folder out. And inside that Blender folder is, uh, well, the Blender executable, right? So you can run it without installing it. Uh, so just a quick reminder about that uh, for you guys. Um, this is where you can go to get any updates when a new version comes out, right? We're not, we're expecting Blender 3.0 soon, right? I think sometime like late November, early December. Um, anyways, close that up. And you can see I've actually got Blender already kind of extracted here. So you'll just, you know, open your zip file up, drag that folder out. And what you do is you just open the folder and you'll see there's actually the Blender executable. So you double click on that. Now, of course, I've already got um, the initial setup done, right? So I'm just going to start a new scene, general, right? Remember, though, if you want to turn on industry compatible, that is edit preferences, right? Edit preferences. And you go to key map, right? Key map. And you just go right up here to the top. And you'll actually see that there, of course, is this pull down. Now, the first time you're installing this or extracting it to run it, It'll be set to Blender by default, right? Um, there is, of course, that ability to right when it pops up that screen for the first time to change it. You'll see something similar, like it'll say Blender. And then you can click on that and pick Industry Compatible. But you can also get back to it through Preferences, right? Edit, Preferences. And that brings this up, of course, right? So Edit, Preferences brings this up. Key Map, switch to Industry Compatible. Uh, of course, because we're doing our block in, AutoMirror makes that easier for us, right? So since we're already in preferences, it's probably a good idea to go back to add-ons, right? The little add-on section here. And remember, there's a little magnifying glass up at the top right here, right? And so I can click on that, and I can just type in auto, right? As in, like, auto, automobile, right? Automobile. And you'll see that there is, uh, it'll kind of narrow it down to just uh, stuff with auto in the word, right? Like AutoCAD and auto tile size for rendering. And auto mirror is one of those. It's kind of mesh underscore auto mirror. You check that on, right? These are checks. You can kind of check them on or off. Now remember, this add-on, many of these add-ons come with Blender, right? You don't have to go find them elsewhere and download them. They're already there. You just need to turn them on. So add-on. Uh, AutoMirror is pretty cool for that stuff, right? So just make sure, like I said, edit, preferences, go to the add-on section, maybe just kind of narrow the search down to auto, and then check on AutoMirror. Now, what's that setup, of course? I like to focus my layout, right? We've got these layouts at the very top here. And layouts is kind of the first one. Uh, modeling is what we want to focus on, right? So we click on the modeling tab. And you'll see it's got specific tools up here that show us our modeling tools, as well as some of our major modeling tools there. So it gives us a great interface for just modeling that's going to be easy to find stuff. Now, of course, we have our outliner up here in the top right corner, right? Just like this is our properties menu, and it has a bunch of different properties for different stuff. This is your outliner, and that's really just a list of all your objects that are in the scene, and that includes cameras and lights. Now, remember, there's these little eyeballs icons, right? You can just check on those to turn the visibility off of your camera and your light, right? We don't need to see or work with those right now. So that's good to do. Now, remember, kind of right up here, right? Right next to our uh, scene collection area, right, and our outliner, there's also this kind of uh, Blender's version of a view compass, right? You can actually kind of go to side views, top views. There's actually quick keys for that, like F1, F2, F3, uh, stuff like that. Um, but you can also do it from there. 
But right next to that is this little V, right? And remember, there should be a mouse for every computer here. Uh, and I feel like maybe some of the mice got moved and moved in the room, so we'll have to kind of look for those again. Um, uh, but if you can use a three-button mouse, you should do that, right? Um, but remember, there's this little V, right? It's kind of pointing to the side. If you click on that, that brings up this, right? And that has the edit, these tabs right here, and one of them's called edit. So just to show this one more time, right? There's a little V right next to it. Click on it, opens this up, brings these tabs up. You can click on edit, because usually it brings up like item or tool. Click on the edit tab, and you'll see I have a couple other ones here, like loop tools and mesh tools. Uh, B surfaces might be open, probably close that one. But you just click on the words, and it opens and closes them, right? One of those is auto mirror, right? Auto mirror. So I can click on auto mirror, and it opens this up. Now remember, what Blender does for auto mirror is it's actually going to cut this model in half, because if you don't use auto mirror, you have to put an edge loop down the center. Then you have to select faces on one side and delete them. Then you have to go apply the mirror modifier. What auto mirror does is it automates a bunch of those steps. That's why it's a great add-on. Also, it lets me talk to you guys and show you add-ons, all right? Now, I do prefer to have editable and toggle edit so that the full kind of, you can see on cage all of the full mirror effects, right? These things still work without those turned on, um, but you kind of only see uh, the kind of selection stuff on one side instead of the other. Just like with subdivisional surfaces, you kind of see the bigger blocky control cage. Those are actually annoying. So for me, I always turn on the uh, editable toggle edit. The default axis of X is fine, right? Because that's the red axis. So we'll auto mirror. And you see, automatically, it actually put an edge down the center, deletes half the model, then applies a mirror modifier, right? Remember that blue wrench in the properties menu is your modifiers thing, right? And this is, it takes a couple minutes to set this up at the beginning. Um, actually, when you get good at it, it takes like a minute, but <laughs> maybe 30 seconds. But these are important because once these are set up, they're on and they stay on the whole time for us, right? So we turn those on. Clipping's on for us, and that's good because we want that on. You see how uh, use clips already on by default. So the mirror's applied. And you'll notice what that does is that gives us full symmetry, right? I could select vertices on this side. It selects them on that side. Now, I do want to add another modifier. Remember, though, there are core quick keys that we have. One for vertex. Really, it's actually edit mode but that's vertex edit mode. And remember, they're up here, right? And I know that this is old hat for some of you guys, but for some of you guys, it's great reinforcement. Got a couple of new students in here as well. Never hurts to have a little bit of reinforcement the first couple days of a new project. But remember, if you go up here to this little kind of area, it's kind of right here. It'll usually say mode. Mode will always be part of it, right? Or a paint, right? But it's this little pull-down menu right here. And you'll see that there's edit mode, one, and there's object mode, four. And that's all we really need for now, right? Later on, we'll see sculpt and texture paint modes uh, later in the uh, quarter, right, in the term. But for right now, edit mode and object mode. Edit mode is one. Two is edge mode. Three is face mode. And you'll see that they're right here as well. So once you're in edit mode, there's actually buttons for these types as well. And then, of course, four, four on your keyboard is object mode. Now, those ones are the ones that are above your alphabet, right? If you look where Q, W, E, R are, you'll see one, two, three, four above them. We're talking about those. Now, that, of course, takes us to object mode, and this lets us work with the whole cube object that's created by default, right? I want to apply another modifier, right? So blue wrench, add modifier, subdivision surface. Right now, on your smaller monitors, you might actually see a little triangle down here, right? Because um, you might not see all these, so you might just hover over the triangle down here with your cursor, and then it'll kind of show you more. It'll kind of scroll down automatically. But I want subdivision surface. There we go. Now, by default, you'll see that it's got this kind of faceted shading, right? None of the polygons are uh, blending together shading-wise, right? How they shade. So if you right-click. Because I'm in object mode, right click, 
right? That's the right mouse button. It gives you your object context menu, right? And there's some cool stuff we sometimes use in here, right? But I just want shade smooth. And that actually smooth shades that, right? It kind of blends the normals together so that it looks kind of uh, like it's shading as a smooth object. Now, if I go to say two or three for edge or face mode, you'll notice that control cage comes up, right? It's the low res cube. Remember, the subdivisional surface is really just kind of uh, the mesh subdivided, but virtually. So it's not quite real, right? You can still actually use these simple shapes to work with, right? But that's where that triangle comes in, right? You notice how that's kind of already on for the mirror? That was part of the toggle edit, editable stuff. This triangle at the very front of your modifiers is important, right? So if I click on that, that actually shows the full effect on the cage, right? Adjust edit cage to modify results. So it actually is kind of showing the full effect directly on the mesh instead of kind of half of it, if you will, right? It's kind of, it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know why you really would want those on. I usually always want those on myself, but sometimes you might not. But once you get those set up, you then have a good start for this, right? You've got the two modifiers. You always want to do mirror first, then subdivision surface, right? If these the orders changed, the seam along the center will be kind of sharper, right? So usually mirror should be first on the top and then subdivision on the bottom. You can drag these around to change the order, uh, but like I said, it's not really a good idea. I like subdivision below. So now we have our cube and kind of all the big starting stuff is set up, right? Our mirror is set up. That gives us symmetry so that whatever I do on one side happens on the other, right? But it also gives us that kind of rounded shape that's going to make our life easier to make us allow us to shape a character quicker and easier. Now, remember, we have different selection types, right? Also, remember your quick keys. Alt left mouse button, hold down alt left mouse, left mouse button for camera rotate. If you've got a three button mouse, your scroll wheel is a mouse button. Alt middle mouse button will move your camera. And then, of course, Alt-Right mouse button will zoom your camera, right? You have to hold them down. So definitely take advantage of the mice that are around you if you don't have your own, right? Because um, that'll make your life easier than using a touchpad for this stuff, a lot easier. And of course, one is vertex, two is edge, three is face. And if you left click, right, left click with your left mouse button, I can grab that face. I can hit W for move, right? Remember, W is move, E is rotate, R is scale, and they are right here. Q is select, right? So Q gives your select tool, W gives your move tool, E gives your rotate, R scale. We'll just use move for now. W for move, right? And of course, you can grab on these handles. Remember, these are set up to your X, Y, and Z axes, right? X is the red axis. Uh, blue is the Z, uh, green is the Y. So if I want to move up, I just grab the blue arrow, move it up. There we go. Now, at this point, I can only do so much. Maybe grab this one, move it out a little bit. I can only do so much with this, a, an elongated cube, right? I can only do so much with that. There we go. This mice, mouse is a little weird. Um, so I need a, a little more geometry here, right? So one of the quickest, easiest ways to start adding edge loops is loop cut, right? It's right here, loop cut. Alt-C is the quick key for it, Alt-C. But it's right here. And you'll notice, remember, it always goes kind of perpendicular to the edge you're over. And it tries to add a whole edge loop. So do the sign out and the pass. <laughs> so if I left click drag, you see how I can drag an edge loop, put it in there. I can hold down left mouse button drag, put an edge loop there, maybe one more right about here. And now we have a few edge loops going this direction. We can now then go to W for move again. We're already in edge mode, right, two. This edge loop's already selected, so if I want, I can move it forward. 
Remember, you can always just grab a single edge. And if you want to use view move, that's middle mouse button, right? View move is middle mouse button. So I can just grab some edges, middle mouse button, just to move based on the camera. <coughs> and I can just start to kind of get a little bit of shape for our kind of character creature, right? This is the torso, right? We're talking about kind of building that S curve. That's kind of what I'm getting here. There's a little bit of that shape kind of for your spine. Move this around a little bit. <coughs> Keep in mind to... <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind that if you move stuff too close to the center, clipping will take over. See how it starts to do that? Kind of merges it together. If you turn clipping off, usually you can bring that back out and then turn clipping back on. But clipping keeps these centers on top so they don't pull apart. They'll even auto weld together when you do extrusions. Clipping is amazing. You just have to be a little bit careful with it when you get stuff too close to the center, right? So be aware of that, right? If you move an edge too close, it's going to start to do that. It's not supposed to do that. That's not what you want. So you can always undo that. But if you need to, you can always turn clipping off temporarily, right? To go back in and fix it. You can always kind of pull it back apart usually and turn it back on. But you want to be careful with that stuff. Now, I want, my tr I want my kind of character creature to have a wider stance. Uh, so if I want, I could go to three for face, and I could bring out some of these faces a bit more. Give it a bit wider stance there. And I'm going to save this, right? File. Save is Control-S, right? Save is Control-S. And then, of course, you see how it's going to let me save on the uh, wherever I want to. So I could go to uh, Desktop. And I'll just uh, call this, uh, let's say, um, biped underscore uh, 3D modeling A. There we go. I can put, a, put it in a folder later on. So remember, Control S, of course, is save. You can, of course, save the work you're doing. Uh, three to face. Three for face mode, right? There are buttons right up here, though, too. Three for face mode. And what we want to do is we want to start to extrude, right? We want to extrude. It's right here, right? Remember, when you've got the modeling workspace up, they're all right there. Control E for elephant, E for elevator is extrude. Control E. Now, remember, this brings up two handles for you, right? The yellow one which will give you the ability to move along average normal direction. And this one, which is view extrude. But middle mouse button pretty much always does view stuff in Blender. So you just do middle mouse button to kind of drag out, right? Hold down middle mouse button, move your cursor. And we see how we can start to extrude that off a little bit. And we want this arm to bend down a little bit, so I'm going to hit E for rotate. So we're going to build it already in a bit of a pose. Um, Generally, if you're in a rig, usually you'd kind of have it more like um, like Da Vinci style. Um, for us, though, we're not going to rig it. We're just going to pose it with the pose brush. So Control E for extrusion, middle mouse button. Bring it down a little bit. We do want a little bit of kind of bulked out arm, though. And then one more Control E for extrusion, middle mouse button. Drag, right? You hold down middle mouse button, move your cursor. And we can see that that extrusion makes appendages for us, right? And this is one of those things that we did a bunch on our crab creature. So you see how we're not radically reinventing the wheel at all. Um, we're just using a lot of the same basic tools and ideas. We're just making a bit more complicated model, right? So believe it or not, this is a lot of what you already know. We're just making a bit more complicated model. And I'll show you guys a couple of new tools, but that gives us an arm. Now, at this point, I could probably switch back to W for move. And I could always go back in here and shape a little bit, right? We don't want the shape to be too slanted there or too thick in areas. So I could always select a face. Remember, three is face mode. W is move. But remember, they're right here, right? You can always grab this pull down and switch to edit mode. 
The buttons for Vertex, Edge, and Face are right there. And of course, Move, Rotate, and Scale are right here. But it's great to start learning those quick keys, right? And a lot of you guys already know, and that's, you know, the whole point. But reinforcing is good. Remember, middle mouse button, if you hold that middle mouse button, that does view move. So that can be a great way to kind of quickly just make quick adjustments on our character. I'm going to go to two for edge mode so I can grab this edge. I am going to show you guys tweak more a little bit later on, but for right now, just kind of remind you guys about the move tool. Now we've got an arm. Now that might be a bit of a big arm, so, you know, we could always adjust it, right? Three for face mode, move that back up a little bit that back in a little bit. We can always select that face, and drag it down a bit, right? So it's not like we can't keep adjusting this as we go. I'm going to go to face mode up here. I'm going to do control E for extrude there. Middle mouse button. Make sure it's not pushing in too much here. Another middle mouse button drag, right, to do a second extrusion. Now remember, these tools can stay on, and you can switch to a different polygon. So you don't even have to turn the tool off. You can just left-click on that polygon there. So you notice how we have a, a more specific order for how we're building this one, right? We get our torso. We get a couple of edge loops on there. We then extrude our arm out. That then sets it up so that we can start to extrude the neck, then the head, and then we switch from this polygon to this one to do the face. And then, of course, I can grab these faces, right? W for move. We're already in face mode, three for face mode. Remember, shift adds to selections, right? So I can shift left click to add a second one. And there's lots of other great selection tools. We'll keep talking about teaching those again as we go. Middle mouse button from the view move, so I can view that in a little bit. There we go. And we can easily just start to adjust some more shape for this. I can go to two for edge mode if I want. I can bring that down a bit. Bring that down a bit. Maybe bring that up and that out, right? So we kind of can make adjustments as we work. Maybe bring that one back a little bit as well. That one forward, right? So we just can kind of move those around to get where we need to go. Remove these edges. Getting some more shape and form. Now, like I said, in this case, I kind of feel like this body is not quite as white as I want it. So remember, one of the tools you have is you have the ability to, say, go to face mode. Grab a face on the bottom here. Up arrow is your more or less. It's actually in the select menu. Select more or less. Up arrow, down arrow. So when you hit up arrow, it just keeps growing your selection. Then I could maybe shift add that one, then uh, down arrow to shrink, right? Less. And then I could always move this out to kind of widen that body up a little bit, right? I do want to put an edge loop down the center here because we don't want to just extrude our leg off the bottom here. We need kind of a, a bit of geometry there to kind of be the crotch area. So remember, loop cut right here, extrudes right there, loop cuts right here. Alt sees the quick key for it. And this one I'll just put right in the middle, right? If you just click, it puts it right in the middle. And that might be a little bit square for you, so you could always um, adjust it or shape it a little bit more if you want to. I feel like it's actually okay on this one. I'm going to go to three for face mode. I'm going to select this bottom face, right? You see how we actually have a face on the bottom here, but there's also polygons that we don't have selected, right? And we just do extrude there. Control E for extrude, middle mouse button. I'll do another middle mouse button kind of for the knee. So that first one was kind of the thigh. Then the knee, whoops, that was too many. And then kind of the lower leg, calf. Now remember that up arrow does more. So I can move that out a little bit. And now feel free to just start selecting faces and moving the shape, right? I go to two for edge mode. Middle mouse button for view move. And we start to adjust the shape a lot more, right? We want to get that bit of curvature that this leg has. You see how by grabbing these edges from the side view, I can all of a sudden do that. 
And remember, if you go to three for face mode, up arrow, and I can grab that leg, and I can make that leg smaller. Maybe one or more up arrow, kind of bring that out a little bit. And we can start to do some shaping for this. And now you can start to see that we have kind of a bit of a troll body start, right? And we can keep adjusting shape and form if we want to. Um, I think this will probably be a great place to stop for today, though. So remember, Control S is your quick key to save that. And I will now re stop recording this video.